Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we study what? Today we study the, the, the capacitance required or the QVARs required that would be what? That we would have to inject into the system to improve our power factor and to compensate for what? For the lead, for the lagging uh, uh, QVARs, right? Yes, so I will uh, give the heading what? That is the rating or the size you could say. So the rating of power factor correction equipment rating of power factor correction equipment okay so what do i have over here let's say let's say what is the case i go according to the notations of the book okay so they have named it as it was previously so for instance for instance i have a load i have a load that is an inductive load so this is from the previous video again you could say so this is a load right the load has got a current what the load has got a current of i and it is connected across a supply voltage v so the inductive load so this means what that the voltage would uh, be, uh, be, be, be the current would be lagging the voltage by an angle this is the current that is this i this is let's say let's say making an angle of phi 1 with the voltage let's say we increase it a little this is the reference axis i cause of phi i i cause of phi i saw the phi whatever it is now what do i have is i i i put a capacitor or you know any leading current taking device i would just name it a capacitor over here so let's say this capacitor I have installed over here, this would take a current that is IC that would lead the voltage by a 90 degrees. I would write it over here. This is my IC. Fine. Now what happens is, so the, 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 the supply that is delivering the current is I dash and now the I dash after power factor correction equipment would be equal to what? This would be equal to IC plus the previous current I. So I would just name it over here. I would just, this would be the phasor sum in this case. This is my IC. So what happens is that this would now be the current that is the new current in the circuit that has reduced. This is now I dash. And the angle between the voltage and the current has also reduced to phi 2. So if phi 2 is the, is the angle of the after power factor correction equipment so this is less than phi 1 that is before power factor and this implies what that cause of phi 2 would be greater than cause of phi 1 and this implies what that you have increased the power factor fine yes sir now what do you have now what do you have have a look i dash is also less than i i dash is also less than i right and then the rest thing you know that the reactive component has reduced and the active component is the same is that fine it is now what do you have is if you see i cause of theta 1 is the same as i cause of theta 2 have a look the same projection is lying over here so i cause of theta 1 is the same as i dash cause of phi 2 phi 2 right yes so this implies what from here you could say that p1 is equal to p2 this we have seen from the previous video now what do i have i have the reactive component so we talked about that so if we talk about that so this one now this one is my i dash sine of phi 2 so and the total is i dash sine of phi 1 so which means what that i dash sine of phi 2 is equal to what i sine of phi 1 minus minus ic right this is for the reactive component and if i multiply this by a v if I multiply both sides by V or they have not multiplied it yet, what do you have is first of all, I would take IC to this side. I am interested in the capacitor current basically. So IC would be equal to 
आई साइन ऑफ फाइव वन माइनस आई डैश साइन ऑफ फाइव टू राइट यस नाउ व्हाट डू यू हैव नाउ इफ फॉर इंस्टेंस फॉर इंस्टेंस इफ आई से आई सी दिस इज इक्वल टू आई साइन ऑफ फाइव वन इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई एंड डिवाइडेड बाय कॉस टर्म कॉज ऑफ फाइव वन डिवाइडेड बाय कॉज ऑफ फाइव वन डू यू हैव एनी ऑब्जेक्शन यू डोंट माइनस आई डैश साइन ऑफ फाइव टू मल्टीप्लाइड वट मल्टीप्लाइड कॉज ऑफ फाइव टू डिवाइडेड बाय कॉज ऑफ फाइव टू डू यू हैव एनी ऑब्जेक्शन यू डोंट you don't have any objection so i see is what i would write again over here is i sin upon cos sin upon cos is tangent so i and this cos of phi 1 tangent of phi 1 minus i dash cos of phi 2 and sin phi 2 divided by cos phi 2 tangent of phi 2 multiply both sides by the voltage v which is the same it is in parallel multiply both sides by v what happens is this v times ic is the power drawn by the capacitor this v times ic is the power drawn by the capacitor which is the leading power and the reactive power the capacitor does not draw any real power so this is qc now have a look vi cos of phi 1 is have a look what this would be equal to p1 this would be equal to p1 tangent of phi 1 and then what do you have minus v i dash cos of phi 2 this is equal to p2 and tangent of phi 2 so this is the rating or these are the qvars required which would give you the power factor these are the kvrs that are the leading kvrs that you would inject into the system over here you could see what over here you can also say that p1 is equal to p2 right over here have a look the real power is the same p1 is equal to p2 but we will also have questions where p1 would not be equal to p2 right so over there we would have to use this formula p1 would not be equal to p2 we'll see that in the examples don't worry about that but over here p1 is equal to p2 so the rating of the capacitor qc comes equal to what p times tangent of phi 1 minus tangent of phi 2 and this is the formula that you are going to use over here is that fine it is this will give you the rating of the capacitor in kvars how much leading kvars you need to inject into your system now when we talking about the capacitors over here we'll talk about kvars forget about farads okay you're not kids anymore uh, uh, the fsc students or the kids talk about capacitors in farad microfarads and and megafarads and this and that right yes if for instance you talk about the in, in the farads or the reactives as well for instance if you want to talk about it so what do you have is that ic is equal to i sin of phi 1 minus i dash sin of phi 2 right yes yes so from here you you know that xc xc is basically what xc is equal to uh, vc upon ic you would say we see upon ic or also this is equal to 1 upon omega c which is equal to 1 upon 2 pi fc so have a look you have got the value of ic from here the capacitance current you have got from here so which means if you have the capacitance so you can also find the reactant xc for this so uh, in terms of this what do you have ic would come over here omega c and do this thing so which means that xc xc would be ic upon xc is equal to ic upon v omega v omega right yes c is equal to or whatever it is 
C is equal to IC upon V omega. Yes, so this is the capacitance in farads, right? Not the reactance. So from here, you can also do it this way. You can also do it this way, right? Yes. So this is it for this video, but I uh, think this is a shorter video and I don't like short videos. I don't like short videos this much. But anyways, do you want me to have an example over here? An alternator is supplying a load of 300 kilowatts. Do you want me to do it? Let's say just, just the one example, I will just write it over here. Example 6.1, just to a little bit elongate the video. What do you have? An alternator is supplying a load of 300 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.6 lagging. So you have what 300 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.6 lagging. If the power factor is raised to unity, how much? power factor now is raised to unity how much additional kilowatts can the alternator supply for the same qva rating so the additional kilowatts now how much kilowatts can it supply if in both the cases the qva rating of the of the alternator is the same right yes so what do you have basically is that qva is equal to uh, kilowatts upon cos of phi because the power factor cos of phi is the kilowatt divided by kva is right yes so have a look the kva you are given you can find from here is 300 divided by 0 0.6 what does this come out to be this is 500 kva 500 so so to, to not get confused think about it without the units you have 500 but you cannot use the 500 you can use 300 for instance rupees you've got 500 rupees but you can use only 300 rupees out of them and that is because of the low power factor now have a look if the power factor becomes unity if the power factor becomes unity that is one so what happens is the kilowatts that you can use would be what the kvas multiply the power factor which would be equal to 500 multiply 1 which is 500 kilowatts now you can use out of what out of the 500 kvas which means out of the total 500 rupees you can use all of the 500 rupees and that the strength or the capability has increased due to the higher power factor right yes so the increased power supplied is what so previously you could have supplied a 300 and now you can supply a 500 so which means you can supply an additional what increased power supplied is what previously you could have supplied 300 now you can supply 500 so which means that you can supply an additional of a 200 kilowatt with the same rating with the same machine but with an increased power factor note the importance of power factor improvement from here when the power factor of the alternator is unity, the 500 kVA are also 500 kilowatts and the engine driving the alternator has to be capable of developing this power together with the losses. But when the power factor of the load is 0.6, the power is only 300 kilowatts. Therefore, the engine is developing only 300 kilowatts, though the rating is 500 kV. So this is the importance of power factor improvement. I will finish this video over here. We'll start discussing some examples, a number of examples from the next video. Till then, take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.